Welcome to the Object-Oriented Design Patterns in Real Life series. I'm your host, CY. In this series, we will combine design patterns with engaging real-life examples, so we can get an intuitive understanding of these patterns. And in this episode, we will talk about factory patterns. Factory patterns are about encapsulating object creation. Before we dive into that, let's meet Jeff. Jeff is the CTO of a cheesecake shop, iCheesecake. Something has been bothering Jeff lately, and that has to do with Kevin. Kevin is the new Triple CO of the company. What's Triple CO, you may ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. Triple CO stands for Chief Creative Cheesecake Officer. In other words, Kevin's job is to come up with different cheesecake ideas. Before Kevin joined, the shop offered three flavors of cheesecake, original, blueberry, and strawberry. And the Coke looks like this. We first select the right type of cake. If we want a strawberry cheesecake, we will use the strawberry cheesecake class. If we want a blueberry one, we will use the blueberry cheesecake class. Otherwise, we will just use the original cheesecake class. Then we make the crust, add layers, bake it, refrigerate it, add toppings, and voila, the cake is ready. Easy peasy. One day, Kevin proposed a new flavor, coffee. Coffee flavored cheesecake. Jeff thinks about it for a second and says, Sure, that sounds delicious, and I know how to change the code to do it. So Jeff goes on to updating the code to handle this new flavor. And now, if the cheesecake type is coffee, the code will use the coffee cheesecake class. A few days pass, Kevin has another idea. How about matcha cheesecakes? Jeff thinks about it for a second and says, Sure. I like matcha, and I can see it become popular. Let me go update the code to handle that as well. So Jeff once again updates the code, and now if the cheesecake type is matcha, guess what? The code will use the matcha cheesecake class. And a week later, Kevin has another idea, boba cheesecake. Jeff is slightly annoyed, but he can't quite figure out why. He also couldn't really blame Kevin, after all. Kevin is just doing his job. Sure, he says, with a not so happy face, and then goes on to updating the code. On his way home from work, Jeff couldn't help but start thinking about work. Something about his code is bothering him, but he can't put his finger on it. As he reflects, he remembers back in the software engineering classes in college, Professor Reed mentioned. Change is the only constant in software, in life. Now he understands what he meant. He also remembers. He learned about design patterns from that class. As soon as he reaches home, Jeff pulls up the design pattern textbook and starts reading, hoping the book can give him some clues about how to improve his code. He decides to sleep on the book to get more inspiration. In his sleep, he starts to dream about his code. He realizes, with all the changes, the only thing that actually gets changed is the case statement that determines which cheesecake class to use. All the following steps about how to make the cake stays intact. That reminds him of the design principle, which says, "Separate what changes from what doesn't." That's his light bulb moment. What has been bothering him this whole time is that. He has to modify the made cheesecake method over and over again. While in reality, the only part that needed to be updated is the case statement. This makes him feel a little bit "quote unquote" dirty, since he knows each time he modifies a part of the code, he may introduce bugs. The parts that changes are the fragile parts of the system. He wants to keep the stable parts away from the fragile parts. So even if he does introduce bugs when updating the code, it will be easier to locate the bug. So next morning, as soon as he gets to the office, he updates the code to move out the case statement and encapsulates it as the cheesecake factory class. Right after that, Kevin comes with a new idea: mango cheesecake. Sure thing, Jeff says with confidence. And all he needs to do now 
is to update the Cheesecake Factory class to handle the mango cheesecake. And now everyone is happy. What we just go over is an example of simple factory. The idea behind it is to encapsulate object creation. There are some advantages of it. First of all, it's reusable. If we need to create the right type of cake for some other reasons, we can reuse the Cheesecake Factory class. And that class is the only class we need to change if we need to make any updates about how to select the right type of cake, like introducing new flavors or removing existing flavors, for example. Now, it's worth noting that the simple factory is more like a programming idiom than a formal design pattern. In the official factory pattern family, there are two patterns, the factory matic pattern and the abstract factory pattern. The first one is based on inheritance, whereas the second one uses object composition. But there are stories for another time. Regardless which pattern you end up using, the key idea behind factory is to encapsulate object creation. Let's recap some key takeaways. First of all, we learned that factory patterns are about encapsulating object creation. We also learned an important design principle, encapsulate what varies. We want to separate the parts that vary often from the stable parts, because each time we modify a part of our code, we may introduce bugs. The parts that vary are the fragile parts of our system. We want to keep the stable parts away from the fragile parts. So if we do introduce bugs when updating a part of the system, it will be easier for us to locate the bug. Lastly, we also touch on an important lesson that's applicable to both software development and life. Change is the only constant. It's very common that during or after the development of a feature, the requirements change. Having good communication and setting the right expectation, meaning to actually expect and anticipate changes is very important for those cases. Alright, that's it for today. If you are interested in reading it in a blog post format, see link in the description. Comment, like, or subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of video. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.